try hammer. Get in there. Bring it down. There we go. You got any more? Ooh. Hello everybody, good day to you. Welcome back. This right here is a 2007, I think. I think it's a seven. Honda CRV. Let's just double check the sticker. Uh, negative, that's a 2009 Honda CRV. All right, let's get back into the swing of things here. It was a it was a holiday weekend and, and I haven't been making any videos, so uh, I guess I'm returning to action after uh, a few days. Kind of abnormal for the regular protocol, but you know, everybody's gotta take a break sometimes, right? Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and swing this 2009 Honda CRV into the shop at 77,095 miles on the odometer. How about that? We've got no check engine light, no warning indicators whatsoever. I think we're gonna do some basic maintenance services on this unit. And uh, I think they wanted, I've got a list here, I'm looking at it. Yeah, we're gonna do an inspection of the undercarriage. We're looking for some leaks and we wanna pay special attention to uh, the front end, the steering and suspension and whatnot. So uh, let's go out, actually let's take it on a test drive real quick and then uh, and we'll go from there. Lauren's gonna get the gate for us. Thank you, darling. All right, out on the road we go. We're gonna feel for some loose steering. We're gonna feel the brakes. We're gonna feel the overall condition of the vehicle, shifting, engine performance, etc. cetera. Uh, that also affords us a good opportunity to check the uh, climate control system. They, uh, they stated that the AC underperforms when it's uh, super hot outside. And uh, being here in Southern Florida, it's super hot outside um, all the time. Now, oddly enough, I hear something going on in the blower motor over there. You hear that wispy rattle type of noise thing going on? I believe there's uh, some kind of obstruction in the fan. Let's turn it up a little louder. Yeah, I hear something in that fan cage. Maybe there's leaves in there. All right, so we're at decent speed here on top of the bridge. Let's give it some brakes and see how they feel. Mm, nice smooth braking action. All righty, back at the shop. Let's swing this thing into the stall. Get it up in the air after we rack it up and uh, we'll start our visual inspecting. Oh no, Lauren's not here to get the gate. What do I do? So the real question is, is do we do straight ahead or do we do over in the corner? I don't know which one I want. I vote straight ahead, this thing's kind of small. So yeah, let's go do the straight ahead method. That works for me. Right about, mm, let's see, center of gravity is at the driver. We'll do right about here, that looks good. All right, let's check our lift arms, that's got clearance. That one has clearance, good to go. Parking's the auto, powering down. And of course, we need to pop in the, not the gas door, there's the hood. There it is, pop in the hood. Actually, real quick, before we do anything, let me see if I can't figure out what the deal is with that noise coming out of this blower motor over here. Cause I heard it and I didn't really much care for it. Seems we've had a new cabin filter installed not long ago. Now, in order to get access to this cabin filter, let's disconnect the, uh, the door check. That's this thing right here. That's what keeps the door from opening too far. And then we can push the tabs in on the door. See that? Push those guys in and the door's gonna swing down. Once the door swings down, we could spill all the stuff out of the inside. And that gives us access to the hatch for the cabin filter right here. It's got two little clips on it. Let's pull this guy out. So yes, the cabin filter is clean, but uh, it's making noise in there. So let me shut down, shut down the fan. I'm just gonna stick my hand into a uh, fan. See if I can't feel anything in there. And I'm, I'm rotating the fan around. It's a, it's a cylindrical fan cage. I don't feel any leaves in there. Okay. Maybe that's just how the motor sounds. Beard, all right. It's too bad. I was hoping to find like some, uh, some live oak leaves in there or something like that. But it appears that there's nothing in it. All right. Well, that's too bad. I wanted to fix the fan noise. I like those little types of bonuses. Anyway, well, that was kind of a, that was a fail. I'm disappointed. Anyway, let's pull this stuff back away and get out of here. Let's go back to uh, the original plan. 
We'll set the rack, begin our inspection. Repowering down. There we go. All right, head it around. Let's open up the hood here, see what we've got to work with. Ooh, nice and shiny. This thing's in good shape, nice and clean. Looks like this is a 2.4 liter. New spark plugs at 70,000, 76,093 miles. Even got the part number on there, see that? New air filter that's been replaced. We're labeling things, this is good. Okay, so at this point forward, this video is gonna be a stark departure from the normal type of content. You see, it appears that the uh, GoPro decided it was gonna stop recording audio. And the next like five or six scenes is nothing but silence. And uh, it's got video, but there's no audio and no narration of me doing whatever it is that I'm doing. So I'm gonna do my best at this point to just supplement that right now. And let's see how this goes. So what I just did was go around to the front wheels and shake them left and right and up and down. I was looking for play in the ball joints, um, tie rod ends, and perhaps even the wheel bearings. I didn't find any. Moving on over here to this left side ball joint, I did see a little bit of dry rot, but no big deal. So far, the brakes all the way around have looked good. Nearly brand new brake pad thickness and the rotors are in very good condition. I'm looking at the rear suspension. So far, so good. Except I see some oil leaking out of this left rear strut. The seal has blown out and it's uh, leaked out all of its charge. Over here, checking the right side, I see no oil. However, I will recommend replacing these in pairs. Moving on to the front struts, I don't see anything leaking on them, but the dust boot on this right front is absolutely disintegrated in multiple spots. It's not ideal, but it's not the end of the world. Kind of a minor issue. It's very common. We see the same thing over here on the left front strut. I'll mention it, but it's not a big deal. There was also a complaint about the AC system underperforming. We can see right here that both of the fans are good. I have the machine hooked up. High side pressure is a little low. Low side's okay. A tad bit on the high side, I'm not too thrilled with it. I'm gonna follow normal procedure and just evacuate all the refrigerant. We're gonna weigh it in the machine and compare it with what is supposed to be in the system just to see if the overall system charge is low or not. It's probably low. It's always low. Just moving around to the driver's side. I'm gonna kick the AC on full blast. We'll throw a thermal meter in the dash vent later on. Okie doke, so the AC machine is about finished with its uh, recovery. So let's get the, uh, the service Schrader valve kit. We'll change out those valves and then recharge it. Let's go ahead and pull these valves out, change them with new ones. We'll uh, vacuum the system and then, come here, come, there we go. We'll vacuum it out, then we'll recharge it. Sound like a plan? I think so. So I've been inside in the office already and I have completed the uh, inspection paperwork and unclick and also the estimate paperwork. Well, that's not okay. Look at that, I broke the, broke the Schrader tool. Hmm, good thing I have extra. Anyway, as I was saying, I've completed all the paperwork and uh, I've submitted the estimate to remedy that issue with uh, the rear strut. The left rear is the more pressing issue because it's physically leaking. The right rear is not, I'm sorry, the fronts are not so much of a big deal simply because those are just dust boots, but I did include those in the estimate as well. And naturally, I, I allow the consumer to make the decisions on those things. I'm not gonna press the issues on stuff like that. Let's try this again with another one of these things. Yeah, see, it came right out. Weird. Anyway, let's pull this valve out of here. Come out. There she is. Got a replacement right here in the kit. Love it. Drop that guy in. Tighten her down. Repeat over here on the high side side. See what I did there? High side side. It's the high side side trader side. Yeah. Pull this one out. I think these are the same part number and they look like it. And they are. Let's dig that guy out. There we go. Drop it in the hole. 
tighten it up. We'll enter a uh, 10 minute vacuum. And while it's vacuuming, I'll go ahead and spill and fill the oil on this thing. Okay, let's go ahead and start the uh, vacuum procedure. Back over to the machine and vacuum. Beginning vacuum now. Don't save. 10 minutes, beginning vacuum. There we go. By the way, you guys often ask in the comments about do I add oil to these? Now we can see this thing has an oil recovery tank right here. And I've made note on how much oil is in it. Uh, if that oil level goes up, I will simply add that amount of oil with the oil injectors uh, after the service. That way it still has a uh, lubricant inside of the system. I often skip uh, the recording of that procedure just because uh, it takes up some time and uh, I didn't think people were very interested in it. But now I know, you guys are, so now I told you. Ask and you shall receive, powering down again. Beep. Okay, let's move this machine so that the cables or the hoses have enough space and we're gonna go ahead and raise this thing up. I'll drop that oil. I'll be back when that's done. You guys have seen enough oil changes over the past few days. See you guys in a minute. Hopefully we'll have authorizations when we return and we can get down to business. the AC system has completed its recovery we're gonna go ahead and let this down we're gonna begin the charge uh, while the oil was draining we heard back from the vehicle owner they've decided to go ahead and have the uh, the struts replaced we're gonna replace the two in the rear uh, due to one having the leak and we're also gonna go ahead and replace the two up in the front that way the entire suspension system has been refreshed and uh, is ready uh, ready for the future. What do we got here? 17.3 ounces. Okay. So let's go back in. Since I can't math today, we'll just switch our measurements to seven to ounces. 17.3 ounces, charge on the high side. Let's check our oil. We only gained about a quarter of an ounce, so I'll add a slight bit of oil to it. This thing's gonna recharge. I'll go ahead and prep the uh, engine oil for, uh, for its new oil to be installed. And uh, then I need to go ahead and get those parts ordered and on the way. So I think what we're going to do here is I'll start with the rears because that's what a failure was. So we'll get into the back hatch. We will disconnect these rear struts uh, up high where they bolt on inside of the cabin. We'll disconnect it down here. We'll change out the unit. And then uh, we'll, uh, after we do the two rears, we'll move forward and do two fronts. Then we can send this thing out and have the wheels aligned. Excellent. Motor oil has been installed. Let's toss the cat back on. We'll do a real quick check of the level. That was only four and a half quarts plus some additives, so I may need to add like another quarter quart after we restart and prime the filter. Let's see what we've got here. Yep, it's right, right here at the top mark. So it looks like we will need one quarter of a quart. No worries, get that later. Beginning oil filter priming procedure now. Shut down. Recheck. And survey says we are now at the middle point right there. Yep, we need a quarter of a quart. Perfect. Maybe half a quart. Freehand pouring things, here we go. Good. Ah, perfect. Right on the money. Right, right here. I know it looks heavy over here, but I can see it right, right there. Just at the three quarter mark. Right here, just below the second dot. That'll work for me. 
Give that a good wipe down. Make sure it stays shiny. Moving on. All right, folks, parts are on the way. Let's go ahead and get started. We need to open up the back hatch on this uh, particular Honda. We're going to be climbing in here to do our work. We have to get to the bolts to the top of those struts, and those are going to be located under this paneling here and over here. So once we get those, uh, those nuts slash bolts removed, we then can come back outside of the vehicle. We'll go back around, just disconnect it from the control arms, and we can drop these units out as, an, as a complete assembly. Okay, climbing into the back of this unit right here. I think we need to uh, fold the seats down because I believe that the bolts for those struts are located under these little, little covers right here. So let's, let's pull these covers back. And I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Uh, yeah, that looks like them. Those guys right there, that's one strut bolt. There's the other one. Let's, uh, let's dig the other side out. Pop this guy out. Yepper. Bolt number two and bolt number, well, three and four, excuse me, I can't count. So I think those look like a 14 millimeter. Let's go fetch some tools and uh, get those guys disconnected here. So we need a deep well 14. We're gonna need a universal. We'll need an extension, 3H drive, there we go. And then we need 3/8 impact. Beautiful, that's what we're looking for. Okay, let's see how this is gonna work out for us in here. Yeah. Did I get the right size socket? Sure did, 14, beautiful. Unclickages. Wow. It's tight. Doesn't wanna come off, okay. No problem, we'll break it loose by hand. We need a ratchet next. That's okay, I have those too. We'll get the long one since that felt pretty tight. I mean, realistically, it probably was a, that extension was probably absorbing all the impact force. I imagine if I could have got the gun on there with just a, just the socket, it would have come apart. But, is what it is, unclick. Oh, that's tight. Dang, okay, okay. Seriously? It's just a strut bolt, guys, come on. Unclick. Oh, hit you guys with a, well, with me, I hit you. I hit you, that oh, twice, I hit you twice. Sorry, fellas and ladies. There are ladies here. We love the ladies. On clicks, there we go. Now, we can impact this thing apart. For more speed, we'll pull the fastener out, set that guy right down here. That's the cool part about interior work is there's lots of spaces to, uh, to set down your parts. Okay, so that's the that's the right side nuts. Let's move on over, and we can loosen up the left side nuts. Then we'll have to go outside and start disconnecting uh, components from the uh, actual suspension here. Unclick this one. Yeah, those are tight. Get that next one right there in the back. Unclicks. Hit you again. Sorry. It is kind of close quarters combat in here. See that? I don't know if my new units are going to come with replacements or not. Replacement hardware, so we're just going to hang on to this old stuff. And if it does, then... Well, then I've got extra nuts. And it's always good to have extra nuts around. Alright, let's get out of here. Those two, I think it's just the two bolts. Let's go ahead and get out of here and uh, we'll disconnect the units down below. All right, Honda, moving back up to a more manageable ride height. All the way up. All right, rolling down below. We seem to only have one fastener on this bottom side. That's this big 17 right here. It runs all the way through this bracket. Now, these types of bolts can be deceiving because oftentimes it looks like there's a nut on this side and that nut will be spot welded on. So people will get a wrench on there and try to break it free and they're hanging off of it and jerking around and it doesn't turn because it is in fact welded on. So we're gonna make sure we just uh, take apart the bolt side and not the nut side. I realize that seems kind of trivial, but those deceptive fasteners, well, they, they get all of us at some point. Everybody falls victim to those 
goofy little welded on fasteners. That wasn't too tight at all. Yeah, that's nice. Go ahead and get that guy a little bit loose. We'll go in here with the electron ratchet. Wrong way. There we go. All the way out. There we go. Now that thing should just come right on out of that hole and we can maneuver it down and outwards in preparation for the new unit. However, seems to be a little stuck. I need more clearance. Okay, so I need to bring this down a little farther, but I really can't. So I think what I'll do is uh, disconnect one of these sway bar links here. And uh, maybe, maybe with the sway bar disconnected, I'll have enough, uh, I'll have enough space to pull this uh, control arm down and then uh, squeeze this unit out of the hole here. Unclick. Okay, the stud's turning. I'll go in there with some pliers. So here, let's just hold on to that stud. Come out. Let's hold on to it tighter. It's not working. Not with these pliers anyway. Okay. Different pliers. You know, I'm gonna grow impatient actually. Switching gears again, I'm just gonna take the sway bar like, off of the subframe and just disconnect it entirely. Come here. Seriously? Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, potential energy in all of this right now. Things are starting to move where I don't want them to move. There we go. Now that twist is gonna be out of everything. Let's fetch that bolt that didn't come out. Okay. See, it all was easy, and then it started becoming not easy. Because I still don't have space to get this out. Come on, you. Maybe if I turn it. No. I need to, it needs to come down more. Like, but it won't. More pry bar. Figure out how to pry bar this thing down some. I don't need that much space. I just need like a couple inches or something. Try it right, right here. A little more, a little more. Come on. Come out. Come out, stubborn strut shock assembly. What are we holding up on? Body of the car, yep. Do I have to take this uh, control arm out to get this thing to come out? Seriously? What is this? Yeah, I, I think I'm gonna have to do that. No way. Unclick. Come on out. Yeah. Ping. So let's see if this one is gonna fight as hard as the uh, the other side did. It probably will. I'm pretty sure it will. Yep. Okay. All right, pry bar coming in right there. Pry down on it. Try to wiggle this thing out. 
Hey, uh, Caster Troy. Woo! Woo! Uh, can you come over here and uh, hang off this pry bar some? You're, you're prying down on the control arm, so leave that right where it is up there. Pull that thing down. That's yes, it? Yeah. All right, let it up. Hang on. You gotta try again somewhere else. I need this space that you're in. So try it over here if you can. Put it, nope, put this on that bolt right there. See that? Yeah. See how you're on that bolt? Try that. That's gonna slip. Don't let it slip. It's only gonna slip if you will it to reality. There you go. We got it. Oh, look, spider webs and eggs and whatnot. That's not okay. All right, those two units are out. The uh, replacement units have arrived. Let us unbox those and uh, we'll get those new ones uh, reinstalled. Okay, there's our old strut. Here is our new replacement strut. Comes with all kinds of warnings on it. Spring under pressure, do not remove nut. That's this one. Serious injury can result. Let's put that over there. Uh, do we need this yellow sticker? Eh, it's on there pretty good. Sure, we can cut that off later. Anyway, these are left side and right side specifics. Specifics, yeah, we got an L on it. That one says it's an L. It appears to match up. It looks good. Everything looks good here. Let's go ahead and get this thing up in position and installed. <laughs> Put that in your book. All right, go ahead and uh, uh, pull that down some. Do your best to not let it slip so I don't lose a fingy. I'm already bleeding. And I'll try to get this thing up into its home here. You're gonna need to give me some more down if you can. You got any more? More down. You got any more? That's as much down as I can get. Nah, I'm gonna need some more than that. Oh, this thing doesn't want to go up there. Um, I don't get it. The other one came out. Why won't this one go in? What is, what's this problem? I'll call your error. It is, it's, it's my error. Yeah. What? Maybe we can go through here. You see here, okay. That's not gonna work. Um, seriously? Like this is exactly how the other one came out. So why doesn't this one go in? Are the mounts bigger? I think it's a bigger mount. All right, we need to disassemble more stuff. These aren't gonna fit. That's, that's cool. <laughs> All right, Troy, relax. It's time to re-strategize what I'm doing here. Okay, since I need more space and I can't get more space, I'm gonna make more space. So at the front of this control arm, it's held to the body with these uh, two bolts here. I'm gonna pull these guys out next. Unclicks loud noises. Here, hold that. Here, hold that. Thank you, sir. Now does it come down? Oh yeah, look at that. Now it moves more. There's no way that's not gonna go in now. Let's try again. Yeah, let's go over here. We're gonna need that extra space so we can see what we're trying to see. Attempt number, I don't even know. We're just gonna attempt it again. Reattempting, yeah, there it goes. Now it's up there. That's what I wanted. Could have just done that from the beginning. Wouldn't have these problems. But no. Why'd you touch my leg with your leg? All right, well that's in, okay. Now let's go put those control arm bolts back in up in the front. All right, well we seem to be making some headway. So let's get this, uh, this bottom bolt in on the strut here. Fry hammer. Get in there. Oh, the ball out, no, I want you to go in, not out, go in. Can you pry bar down, sir, on the control arm from Maybe over there somewhere, yeah. Bring it down. There we go. You got any more? Ooh, don't hurt yourself. That was close. <laughs> yeah. Danger, danger, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me or you. Oh no, too far, scheisse. A little more, down. There we go. Almost. Hang on, man, we're almost in. Okay, all right, you can relax. You're good. Oh, that was stressful. Yeah, I know, right? Stuff's not easy when you're cheesy. Ah, 
that's another plagiarized catchphrase. Look at that. Neutral drop. All right, that's snug enough for now. Let's go get those two bolts up in the front of uh, the control arm here, and that's probably gonna pull this whole assembly up and make sure it's seated at the, against the bottom of the frame there. Uh -oh. Hang on, might, need, might not even need to pry bar this one. I don't think. Is my noggin in the way? Yeah, it was. You guys couldn't see my my crane brainium was interfering with what's going on here. Um, will you grab me the rubber a rubber mallet? I love a gopher. You're the best gopher ever. He just goes for stuff. See our angle's a little goofy here. Let me see that thing. Kind of Here, really reach over, grab this, and pull it down. Just by hand, there you go. Tap it on in. No more? Uh, no, no move. Keep it right there. Are you good? Yeah, I'm sure. You good there, holding on to that? You're good? I'm good. Still good? You're still good. You're good. Your hole is way off. I'm looking right in it. I know. But, like now you can let it go. Yeah, see how the angle's not right here? Oh. Once we bolt, this front on it's going to draw this control arm up and it's going to change that angle and it's going to make this laying this thing line up with that thing and if it doesn't then we'll go under it with a pry bar and force it to become aligned you know that yeah, let's do that right now why not i will make it do what i want hammer and bolts and whatnot looking left and moving over some let's take a look at that mount Get that guy threaded back in. Give it some up. Uh-oh, I hate this gun. The worst gun ever in the history of gun. Flickage. Okay, now we can get this bolt back in. Then we'll go back up top. Bless you. We'll go back up top and get those two bolts that uh, bolt this top of the struts to the, the rest of the chassis. Almost there. Neutral drop. Oh, all right. So every time I do the neutral drop joke, people are like, what's a neutral drop? And a neutral drop is like dumping the clutch in an automatic transmission. You just put it in neutral, then you rev the thing up. And then you slam it into gear and do a burnout. Because if you ain't first, you're last. Oh, another catchphrase rip off. Before we get out of here, let's plug that connector back in where it goes. That goes there. And oh, yeah, the sway bar. We need to get the sway bar bolted back together. Oops, fail on my part. Consistent oversight. But hey, at least I'm consistent. That's what matters, right? in there pliers there we go got it okay let's go bolt the sway bar back to the back of the frame here and then we'll go back up top real easy move it up here put the bolts in tighten it down a one a two Oh, you shake your head at that. <laughs> that take you by surprise and startle you. Just leave it. Don't be scared. It's only a sway bar. Clicks. Good to go. All right. All right. Back into the interior we go. Let's go ahead and let this thing down. Mostly all the way down. We'll go put in those uh, those two 14s. By the way, I need to reuse the fasteners that were in there because the uh, replacement units did not come with the uh, 
hardware. So it's actually really good that I didn't lose that stuff. So what we need to do is climb back up in this unit here. Oh, here we go. And we'll get these fasteners refastened and then put the interior trim and whatnot back together. So yeah, there's that one. Get that one started. And where is, uh-oh, I'm missing one. Seriously? How did I lose one? It's already, I didn't even do anything in here. Whatever, I'll find it. It couldn't have gone far, right? Maybe a mouse took it. You gonna thread or what? There we go. Got one. There's the second one way back there. Come here. Okay, that one's on. Good. Where's that missing fourth one? Seriously? Hmm. I lost a bolt that was sitting in here. Dude. What did, uh, was it a bolt or a nut? It was a nut. Did it look like this? What are you doing with that? It was over there. I don't know how that happened. I don't know either. You did that to me. Don't I do your mess. I know. It's on camera. We left it over here on camera. He's messing with me. <laughs> okay, well, since I either played a joke on myself or Troy did it, it doesn't matter. We found the bolt nut. And that's all that matters. Nut clickages. Okay, that's two. Oh, spin around here. Let's get those other two. Begin nut clicking now. That's tight. Excellent. Now we can get the uh, plastic trim components back in their position here. We'll put the seat back up and we're done here in the interior. Come here. Beautimus. That's, that's nice. Ah, come here, seat. Put that back, put the seat belt back. And seat number two. Latches over here, see that little seat belt looking thing? Put the seat belt back and we are done inside. Let's climb out of here and uh, move on to the fronts. All right guys, so I'm kind of changing uh, my plan a little bit on this one. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and go full circle. Let's restart the engine and check the AC function real quick. Uh, the reason I'm changing the plan is I actually have another appointment coming and they should be here at any moment. So uh, that being said, I'm gonna have to stop working on this car for a little while and take in the other one. So let's, uh, let's bring this video to a conclusion. Let's check the AC, make sure it's making good temperature. And, uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and close this one out right now. Uh, we do have to do the front struts and everything like that, but I'm gonna have to save that for another video. Like I said, I've got another appointment coming in. We've got the rear wheels on it. The, the back paneling is put back together. I need to put the goodies back inside of the truck so I don't accidentally steal those. There we go, we don't wanna keep that stuff. That's not my stuff. So we'll put that down right there. We'll get this guy closed. So we have completed an engine oil change. We did a full on inspection. We found some defects, made some repairs, recharged the AC, put two valves in it. And uh, I've got two other struts over there on the ground waiting to go in. It's gonna be a similar procedure as the fronts. We need to take off the steering knuckle, sway bar link, uh, probably the brake hose, maybe the tie rods, I don't know. And then we have to disassemble this wiper cowl area up here. And we have to do that in order to get to the bolts that are under the paneling uh, in order to, uh, to drop those struts out from the structure of the vehicle. So like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and close this video out right now. Uh, I will do such things as always by thanking each and every one of you guys for watching this video and gals. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If in fact you did enjoy this video, please feel free to let me know about that by tapping that like button down below. Drop me a comment or two while you're down there. And most importantly, do not forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. End of Honda, end of transmission, end of video, end of day. Video over.